Can you stand the rain? Can you stand the rain? It reminds me of a prophetic group called New Edition. Not old edition, New Edition. In 1988, they came out with a smash hit called Can You Stand the Rain? And I believe they were speaking prophetically. They were speaking prophetically. Somebody said, Dr. Shrek, what are you talking about? They wasn't even talking prophetically. They was talking about their boy, their girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. No, but listen to this lyric. They say, sunny days, everybody loves them. Oh, you want me to say it? Sunny days, everybody loves them. See, everybody loved the sunny days. But he says something else. But tell me, can you stand the rain? Then it also says, storms will come. This we know for sure. Can you stand the rain? And see, that's the question. That's the question I have for you. Sunny days, everybody loves them. On sunny days, most of us aren't even thinking about God. But I wanna change your mind about this. When you have sunny days, I want you to thank God. Lord, thank God for these sunny days. Thank God for this sunny day. But I know even in the storms, I wanna change your mentality. Thank God for the storms. Because when you are in a storm, guess what? God is drawing you closer to him. When you are in a storm in your marriage, God is drawing you closer to him. When you are in a storm in your finances, God is drawing you closer to him. When you're in a storm in your health, God is drawing you closer to him. It reminds me in Mark 4, Jesus has just got finished teaching on the mountainside. And he's told his disciples, go ahead and go to the other side of the lake and I'll meet you there. And he was teaching. And so the disciples said, cool, we're going to go ahead and go on the other side. And we got into a lake, into the boat and going across the lake. And guess what happened? The Bible says a storm came up, not just a regular storm. It was a terrible storm. I imagine it was a tsunami like storm. And they started panicking and the waves start rowing and the, the, the way the wind start blowing. And the question is. Can you stand the rain? See, when the waves blow your marriage, when the storms blow your marriage, when the storms blow your finances, when the storms blow in your business, can you stand the rain? And they were terrified out there. And not only that, it wasn't even during the day. It was at night. It was in a, in a, in a dark time. So it's one thing to be in a storm where you can see what's going on through the day. But it's a whole other thing to be in a storm when you can't see what's going on at night. And they were panicking. And the Bible says Jesus came by. Guess what he was doing? He was walking on the water. Jesus was walking on the thing that they were fearful of. Jesus was walking in the middle of the storm, okay, without even a light. You know why? Because Jesus is the light. Jesus walked in the thing that they were afraid of. And that's a word for you, beloved. I want you to understand, no matter what situation that you're facing right now, Jesus is with you in the storm. Jesus is the light in the storm. Jesus is the hope in the storm. Jesus is the battle that you need to have won in the storm. But he's with you right now. And as the Bible says, when Jesus came up, guess what? When they recognized him, they said they, they thought they saw a ghost. And in the middle of our stars, man, we may be seeing all kinds of stuff. We may be seeing ourselves, you're not making it. We may be seeing ourselves sinking. We may be even seeing ourselves drowning. It reminds me of Peter. When they said, oh man, is that Jesus? Is that a ghost? And Peter was like, nah, man, that looks like the son of man. And so he said, Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come out and walk on the water. And guess what the Bible says? Peter stepped out on the water. But you know, in reality, you know what Peter stepped out on? 
Holy Spirit make this plain to him. He stepped out on the word. Oh, come on now. I know the Bible says he stepped out on water, but I believe spiritually a rhema word. He stepped out on the word. He stepped out on the truth about Jesus. He stepped out on the thing that's telling you that you're sick and you're not going to get well. But the truth is, by Jesus Christ stripes, he's, you are healed. See, he stepped out on the fact that your finances can be jacked up from the floor, but you stepping out on the truth that my God on the cattle on a thousand hills, all the gold and silver is, her, is his. And therefore, I am his child. I inherit the promises of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You know, you, you know, you might be in a storm right now in your marriage, but you have to know that the Holy Spirit is working inside of your marriage, connecting everything that needs to be connected and exposing everything that needs to be exposed. Ooh, come on, Holy Spirit. See, the problem is in a lot of marriages, man, we are not connected. That's why our marriages are falling apart. And you say, well, Dr. Shaw, well, how do we get connected? Number one is spending quality time with your spouse. I don't care if you're married for one year or 20 years. You have to have a date night every week. I'm going to repeat that. You have to have a date night or date day every, at least once a week. You turn your cell phones off and you look at each other eye to eye and you tell them that you still love them. You tell them that they're still beautiful. You make them feel like the same butterflies when you got in your stomach when you first started dating them. Hallelujah, glory be to God. See, beloved, it's not all about getting to the cross and Jesus and, and, and on the by and by, we're gonna go to heaven. Man, we have to learn how to learn how to live this abundant life that Jesus said that we can live on this earth. That's why God blessed us with the gift of marriage. But a lot of marriages are failing because they're not spending quality time with one another. I know y'all want to turn me off right now because you, Dr. Show, you don't know how my husband is. Or Dr. Show, you don't even know how my wife is. She gets on my nerve, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? At the end of the day, man, we all have issues in our marriages. That's just the truth. I don't care how long you've been married. We will all have troubles. We will all have storms in our marriage. But guess what? Jesus wanted to be invited in that storm. Let me ask you, when was the last time you invited Jesus into your marriage? When's the last time you asked the Holy Spirit to come into your marriage? When's the last time you asked God to come into your marriage? Because God says, I am, I am. I'm come on now, Holy Spirit. I am, I am. He said, Dr. Shaw, what do you mean I am? I am whatever you need. It's a blank check. Fill it in. Oh my goodness. I am, guess what, your peace in your marriage. I am your affection in your marriage. I am your intimacy in your marriage. I am your understanding in your marriage. I am your finances in your marriage. I don't know why I'm out here on marriages on this Monday. I guess Monday marriage. I don't know why. Somebody said, well, Dr. Short, is 9-11. Yeah, it's 9-11, and some people have 9-11 in their marriages right now. Some people have an emergency right now in their marriage. Some people are having trouble right now in their marriage, and they need a Savior. Jesus will be your Savior if your marriage is sinking, just like he did Peter. See, when Peter was so concentrated on all the problems in his marriage, he was even saying all the problems of his marriage. Said, Dr. Trevor, well, Peter wasn't married. Well, get, come with me. I'm taking you somewhere. Okay. When Peter was concerned about the wind and the waves, guess what happened? He started to sink. He took his eyes off of the what? The Savior. And when he started to sink, he said, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. And some of you guys' marriages are sinking right now. I just want you to ask the Lord right now. I don't care where you are right now. Say, Lord, save me. Lord, save my marriage because the enemy is after marriages. And I know the new edition prophetically so said, sunny days, this we know for sure. Sunny days. This, man, we will, we, everybody loves them. Everybody loved the sunny day in your marriage. But guess what? When storms come, can you stand the rain?
because we will all have them in our marriages. We will all have them in our finances. We will all have them in our health. We will all have them in our relationships with our friends. Some of you guys have friends that I'm going to straight up tell you right now, you need to cut them off. <laughs> I'm not saying you don't need to love them no more. I don't need, I don't mean to say you don't need to pray for them anymore, but some of them you need to cut off. You need to, or, or distance yourself because they are not helping you get to that next level. If they're always talking about other people, they're always talking about this and that, or they're always talking about sports, football and this and that, and they're never adding anything to your life that's going to enhance your life, that's going to enhance your marriage, it's not going to enhance your spiritual relationship with your Lord and Savior, guess what, man? They are not helping you. You know what they're doing? They're entertaining you. Oh my goodness. They are no different than you watching a Chris Rock show and that's it. They're entertaining you. But they, but they are not enhancing you and there's a big difference between entertaining and enhancing and some of you guys marriages are stuck it's because you are being entertained too much you are not around people that's going to speak the truth to you in love about your marital situation right now and the enemy is going to snare you i'm going to repeat that the enemy will snare you and you say dr show well, i don't even know where to start I know I am going through right now. Well, let me say, let me tell you this. Start where David started. David started with telling the Lord the truth about what was going on in himself, in his heart, and in his situation. And say, God, just like Peter said, save me. Show me the truth. Show me some people that I need to get around that's going to enhance me. And that's going to enhance my marriage, going to enhance my business, going to enhance my finances, going to enhance my vision so that I can get to the level that you're calling me to be. Because if I continue to stay around blind people, the Bible says the blind leading the blind, both will do what? Both will fall into a ditch. You said, Dr. Shore, well, won't God get me out the ditch? Yeah, he'll get you out the ditch. But now you all cut up, you beat up, you bruised up, you lost time. You know, you, you, you lost possibly your marriage and you want to start over man it's hell starting over i'm not saying you can't start over but i know people especially professional men that that have done extremely well and their wife was there supporting them the whole time for 10 20 years and they went out there and did something stupid because they did not have the people around them to tell them what they're doing is wrong they had yes men around them and when they were doing stuff wrong, nobody had the courage to tell them, bro, you need to slow down. Bro, you don't need to do that. Bro, you know what? That is going to destroy your life and jack up your children. They had yes men around them. And guess what? They fell. And they fell hard. And they lost everything. They become a joke, a laughing joke in the society. And they got to start all over. And they said, well, you know what? But look at me. You know what? I'm 55 years old and I got a 25-year-old chick. Man, that, what a 25-year-old chick having in common with a 55-year-old man? Nothing but money. Oh, my. Okay. And, and, and sex. Oh, my. Okay, I'm gone. <laughs> Let me get in here and help people with their teeth because y'all ain't ready for the real. Y'all ain't ready. Like they say, you ain't ready for the truth. But I got one question for you. Can you stand the rain? Storms will come. This we know for sure. Now tell me, can you stand the rain? I want to give you three ways how to stand the rain. Number one is being honest that you are in the rain. Being honest that you are in a storm. Say, God, I am in a storm right now and I need you to save me. Number one. Number two is watch who you are around look at who you're around family people friends are they encouraging you are they enhancing you are they just entertaining you because if they are just entertaining you you need to distance yourself from that situation number two number three is that you need to spend time in the word of god you say god show i don't even know where to start well, let me give you two keys where to start. Number one, start in the book of Proverbs. But the book of Proverbs is known as the book of wisdom. 
And sometimes, in or, all the time, in order to get out of the storm, you need wisdom, Remy. You need wisdom, Jeremy. You need wisdom, Angela. You need wisdom, Tiffany. You need, you need wisdom, Gretchen. You need wisdom. And number three, I already said number three, right? I said, Let me give you an extra one. You know, it's pray, 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 pray. <laughs> and not begging praying. I'm saying praying, just being honest and open with God, having a conversation with God about where you are right now, where you, how you're feeling. Because as believers, man, we have a precious gift that lives inside of us called the Holy Spirit. He's our wisdom. He's our counselor. And he's our guide. And there is not an hourly fee for him. He's free 99. He's for free. Tap into that. All right. Love y'all. Hope you got something out this message. Click like. Share this message. Somebody need to hear this message. So, somebody is right now is between life and death. Somebody right now is on the brink of divorce. And this message, if you share this message, I believe in the name of Jesus, this message can set somebody free. This message can keep somebody from being divorced. This message can probably save somebody's life. And I just pray that you have the courage to be able to share this message with somebody else. Love y'all. Grace life. Peace.